Helium Miner SD card replacement is one of the easiest and most impactful miner upgrades to implement. If you see a disk error when you run your diagnostic, your miner has a solid or flashing green status light, or your miner is continuously falling out of sync every few weeks like mine, this is an upgrade you should strongly consider. I am replacing my original 32 gigabyte SD card that came with my Rack V2 for a 128 gigabyte pre-flashed SD card. This might be overkill as I am sure a 64 4 gigabyte will do, but I figured more space can't hurt. The original SD cards are filling up faster than expected with the network growing at such a fast pace and need to purge themselves to create more disk space to continue to download the blockchain. As such, this could impact the status of your miner and could also impact the amount of time that it is earning HNT. If you have any rack miner other than the rack V1, you should be able to easily complete this upgrade. Let's go through what I did in today's video. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another video here in the Crypto Compound channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you guys are having a great day here on our road to 1 million hotspots. So guys, for today, we are going to be talking about the replacement of my original SD card on my first Helium Miner I ever had, which is a Rack V2 pictured right here. And we are gonna walk through the simple steps of replacing this. Now, I took the most simple route you could ever do. You don't have to download any firmware or flash any new SD cards. What I did was actually, I purchased a brand new pre-flash disc card from the People's Antenna. You guys might know about them. I'll put a link down below to their website, but they do sell, in fact, pre-flashed 128 gigabyte SD cards for rack miners. That is what I purchased a few weeks ago, and I waited for my rack miner to fall out of sync as it has been doing every four to six weeks, and now I have officially replaced it, and it is currently syncing again now. So today, we're gonna walk through the very simple process of replacing it, and I will show you a video of me doing it on my very own a little bit in the video. But first, let's understand if you actually need to replace this micro SD card. Here is the actual rack documentation or the minted documentation about this replacement. You can see here, you may need to replace or rewrite the micro SD card that comes with your hotspot if, shows disk error in the diagnostics, is not booting up, shows a solid or flashing green status LED, shows a very old block height and or firmware versions in diagnostics, power cycling has resulted in unknown micro SD card errors such as corrupted files, if it is stuck in the same block after two diagnostics done 24 hours apart. As you can see here, this procedure should only be used for minted and rack V1.5 or V2 hotspots. Now for rack V1 hotspots, it's a little bit more complicated and I am not sure how that works exactly, so I'm not gonna give you any advice there. However, please do not do this process on a rack V1 hotspot, it will not work. Now guys, here are the steps to actually do the firmware and the reflashing of a brand new SD card that you purchased. However, as I mentioned, I purchased this pre-flashed one from the people's antenna online and they shipped it to me a few days later and I'm going to show you how I replace it. This eliminates all of the risk and error in using these firmware files and downloading them incorrectly or flashing it incorrectly. So to take all of that out of the equation, I just bought the pre-flashed one. Of course, you, you can flash it yourself if you want and then we will go through exactly how to actually replace it correctly. Now guys, I also just wanted to mention that these hotspots, the Rack 1.5 or V2 hotspots, or these gold spot or black spot miners originally came with the 32 gigabyte SD card in them. And as the network has grown, the blocks on the blockchain have gotten much, much larger. And now these 32 gigabyte SD cards are simply not enough storage to run this and save this blockchain on the SD card for a considerable amount of time. Once they get filled up, which is tending, which tends to be every four to six weeks, they have to purge themselves and might fall out of sync and fall behind the actual block height. This will result in a few days of off time or downtime, which I have been experiencing with my V2 miner. This process is going to help that as you'll have more storage so the miner won't have to come offline. Of course, neither helium or minted or rack could have foreseen the incredible growth that the Helium network has experienced and the blocks that the block sizes that we now experience on the blockchain. So it's nobody's fault really. However, this upgrade does certainly help and it is super easy. And of course, light hotspots are coming. So these devices won't need to actually store the full blockchain locally any longer. So this should be the first and last time we ever have to do this. Now to get into the actual replacement here, as you can see, this is the 128 gigabyte pre 
flashed card there on the side. Here is my Rack V2 Miner. As you guys might know, this originally is up in the attic, so I did disconnect the antenna and bring it down. I also disconnected the ethernet, bought it downstairs, took off the power cord, and now here we are. There's a sticker here on the side where the antenna port is and you just have to peel it off. This was my first time actually taking it off. So it was really glued on there pretty well, but with a good set of tweezers, you should be able to rip it off as you can see here. This comes off relatively easily, especially if you've done it more than once. Now in there, you will see the original SD card. This comes out with just a firm tug and it will come right out. And as you can see, it comes face down. Uh, and that is the original card that came in there. It is a 32 gigabyte SD card, as you can see there. It's also another SanDisk, which is the same one that I got from the people's antenna. And now I'm going to replace it with the 128 pre-flashed card, just like it came out face down and you insert it back into the slot. You push it in and you'll feel it lock in pretty easily. And then I use the back end of the tweezer to make sure it's really in there so that the connection is full and proper and just really making sure it's in there well. Now you simply just put the sticker back over and it should still have some stick on it and it'll stick right there just like that. And that is it, your miner is ready to go. So guys, once you complete all of that, it, which literally, as you can see, takes maybe, uh, maybe a minute or two, you can go plug your miner back in, run a diagnostic just to make sure everything is good, and then you can wait 24 to 488 hours for it to resync, and you should be good to go. And I will expect this miner now to stay online for a significant longer period of time and not have any outages over the course of 30 days any longer. So guys, I hope this was useful. I'll put all relevant links down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions with yours or if you've done this in the past and it has been successful. I, of course, will give you an update on how this performs over the next few weeks or months. Of course, I expect it to be online 100% going forward or very close to it. I will keep you guys updated. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Please hit that like and subscribe if you have not already. But just like that, this video is over and I will see you next.